Hello and welcome to this reflection from Stretton Vale Baptist Church. It's the second week of Advent, a time when we prepare for the coming of Christmas, for the coming of Jesus into our hearts. And it's the second week of Advent, so it means that we get to light our second Advent candle. We light these candles as a symbol of Jesus coming as the light of the world into this world. And last week we lit a candle that stood for the symbol of hope. And now we think about Jesus coming as the symbol of love. So we're going to light our two candles. We think about Jesus coming as a symbol, as the, the embodiment of love. And we give him thanks. So let's just pray as we begin our Advent reflection for this week. Lord, we thank you that you came because you loved us. You love us so much that you're willing to give up your life for us. Let us not take your love for granted but instead hold on to it and recognise its true importance in all that we do. Amen. So, as I said, we're on the second week of Advent, which also means we're on the second week of our Advent series, looking at the idea of shalom, or complete rest, well-being, peace, a perfect state of idyllicness and we're going to look about look at shalom and its relationship to exhaustion and fatigue and tiredness and see what God tells us about resting in his perfect shalom his perfect peace we live in a world of hurry and rush and it seems that this only this only intensifies as we get to the Christmas period This constant, fast-paced rush through life means that we seem to spend our lives in a constant state of exhaustion and fatigue. When I have conversations with people and I ask how things are with them, I almost always get a response which says something like, I'm okay, just busy. It seems if we're not frantically busy, we take this to be a sign of laziness or apathy. And so we work ourselves to exhaustion and tiredness. It becomes normal to see people walking around with bags under their eyes. And our our addiction to caffeine shows how much we rely on using false senses of energy to get us through the day. But God did not create us to be always busy and rushing through life. From the very beginning, God has modelled to us the importance of rest, of taking time to experience shalom, that peace, rest and wholeness. In Genesis, we read the creation stories in which God created the world in six days and then rested on the seventh day. And so we see in God's example a good pattern of work and rest that avoids leading us to exhaustion, fatigue, and eventually burnout. And yet we find it so difficult to find time to rest. We lead such busy lives, and the world around us is constantly rushing around. And so we are conditioned to think that this is normal, that rest is a luxury that most of us can't afford to take too often. And so, when I read the Christmas story, I always find encouragement that even in the busyness of Mary having a baby, of being told that her son was going to be the long-awaited Messiah, of being forced to travel to Bethlehem, of the visits from people wanting to celebrate his birth, even with all that, Mary found time to pause and ponder and rest. So I'm going to read a bit of the Christmas story from Luke 2, verses 16 to 20. 
So they, that's the shepherds, hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the, the things they had see, heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. That first Christmas must have been so rushed and hurried. Mary gets informed by an angel that she is pregnant, despite the fact that she was a virgin. So she clearly had not planned for a child yet. None of the things she needed for a child to be born would have been in place. So she might have felt a degree of rush to get things ready in the months before the baby was to be born. Which is probably why she went to her cousin Elizabeth to get support as Elizabeth was also expecting a son who would become John the Baptist. And then as the time for the birth comes closer, Caesar Augustus decides to announce a census to be taken. If, I'm, if I was Mary, I'm sure that I would have been angry with Caesar and panicking at having to travel to Bethlehem while heavenly pregnant. I imagine that by the time they got to Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph would have been exhausted, barely able to put one foot in front of the other as they searched for somewhere they could rest. And of course, it is at this moment that Mary goes into labour. Already exhausted from travelling, she now has to find the energy to give birth. But after the birth, surely she has some peace and can get some rest, right? Well, no. In come the shepherds, who have heard about the birth of Jesus from the angels. I'm going to assume that they came with much excitement and jubilation, wanting to celebrate with Mary and Joseph. I imagine that they probably would have been pretty shattered by this point and may not have been particularly up for celebrating in such excitement. But I really love that in the midst of this extremely busy time, we have verse 19. But Mary treasured up all these things, and pondered them in her heart. Even in moments of extreme busyness, Mary took time out to rest, to ponder, and to take stock of all that had happened, even if it might have only been for a few minutes. It actually reminds me of the story of another woman, the woman of um, the story of Susanna Wesley, the mother of John and Charles Wesley trying to find peace and rest, as well as opportunities to pray and spend time with God is hard when there are little children running around demanding attention. But the Wesley boys learned that they were not to disturb their mother if possible when she sat with her apron over her head, because this was the time Susanna was spending praying and resting in God's shalom. So Susanna knew how important it was to make sure she took time to rest and experience shalom. But experience also demonstrated how difficult it was to make this happen with the children around. So she found a solution that enabled her to still be present to look after the children if anything went wrong, but also allowed her to take a few moments to pause and let God refresh her and restore her, bringing her a new lease of life. We often make excuses for why we don't rest as much or spend as much time in God's presence as we need. But these women, living at very different times, but each faced in, with the busyness of life, were able to take time out from that busyness to find rest in God and be re restored by his peace. Do you feel exhausted, like you're running on fumes? How can you pause even for a few minutes each day to let God meet you in the busyness. It might be that while you travel to different places, you use this time to breathe in God's presence and breathe out any tension or exhaustion you might be feeling. Or perhaps while you're doing the household chores, you also use that time to rest with God 
to mentally sit at his feet and listen to him. How can you make time to rest in the shalom of God, even in the busiest moments? So we can find time to snatch a few moments of rest, even in the busy times. But having proper times of rest is not just healthy for us. It is actually something that God commands us to do. So I'm going to read from Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. The fourth command in the Ten Commandments tells us that we need to rest. God does not politely suggest that it might be a good idea to rest. No, he commands us to rest. God knows that we need a good balance between work and regular periods of rest. But he also knows that we're not very good at looking after ourselves and we struggle to maintain that balance. So instead, God makes it a command to rest. He knows that we can't do it if we just make it a polite suggestion, so he tells us that we have to rest. Keeping the Sabbath doesn't just demonstrate our obedience to God by following his commands, but it also acknowledges that God knows what is best for us. By taking a day of rest, we accept that God knows our need for a balance of work and play more than we do, and we submit to his superior knowledge. Through keeping the Sabbath, we are recognising that God is sovereign and his plans are best. The command to keep the Sabbath is probably one of the Ten Commandments that we all struggle to follow most. So often we cram our weeks full and leave no time for rest. God tells us that we've been given six days to do our work and then the seventh day is to rest, to spend time with God and to experience his shalom. He reminds us that he made the world in six days and he rested on the seventh to give us that pattern of work to follow. God has provided a model for us to follow and we experience more of him by following that model. We can experience the satisfaction of work and the peace of rest and know that God is with us through it all because he modelled the pattern for us. We honour God by following the pattern that he has set down for us. Keeping the Sabbath honours God and allows us to experience more of him as well as restoring our souls and giving us the, the thing we need, rest. I also love that in God's command, everyone in the household rests at the same time, which gives the opportunity for family time in which everyone can enjoy peace and rest together. Even the animals were given the opportunity to rest. This image of a day to stop and recharge is beautiful, and yet so often we struggle to achieve it. There is always something else we could be doing with our time. But the idea of the Sabbath reminds us that rest is something that we need to schedule into our week rather than fitting it around the times of work. We have to actively want to seek out rest and restoration. Otherwise, it will always be pushed aside until we collapse in exhaustion. As you think about all that you need to do this week, can you also put on your to-do list, take a day of rest? 
Or as you look at your diary or your calendar, can you select a day in which you do as few work related tasks as possible and designate that as a day to experience God's peace and presence, his shalom. If we cannot squeeze all of our activity and work into six days, perhaps we are trying to take on too many things. If we are unable to achieve everything that we want, perhaps we need to lower our expectations and allow ourselves to rest. You never know. With times of proper rest and restoration, you may find you are more energised and alert and so can actually complete things more effectively and efficiently in the time that you've got for work. And then the final thing I want to say on the topic of exhaustion and rest is that rest is a gift from God that we should eagerly accept because we need it so desperately. Let me read Matthew eleven twenty five to 30. At this time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In Matthew 11, Jesus offers a beautiful invitation to come to him and experience rest. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. In Jesus, we find perfect rest because in him, we no longer have to strive. So much of our frantic busyness is due to a subconscious desire to prove ourselves to be good enough, to achieve, to work, to show our worth. We all have a void inside us because we have become separated from God and we believe subconsciously that if we work hard enough, we can fill that void. Certainly, this is what the Jews in Jesus' time believed. In the time of Jesus, there was the developing rabbinic tradition which called for learning from Pharisees and other religious authorities and to have a vigorous observation of the oral law. Now, this oral law was considered to be of divine origin and it was continually added to over the years with more and more prescriptions and obligations being added to the law. As a result, following the oral law became a heavier burden than listening to scripture itself. So when Jesus told the Jews, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, he was telling them to get out from under the yoke of the heavy burden of law, of oral law that was crushing people and instead to accept the freedom found under Jesus. Now, we may not have the heavy burden of Judaic oral laws to burden us, but we are certainly weighed down and burdened by other things. The expectations that we place on ourselves or that others place on us, the aims and goals that we want to achieve, the desire to please people, the constant attempt to raise ourselves up in social status or hierarchy, all of this and so much more puts so much pressure on us. But Jesus offers to free, offers to free us from the pressures and burdens. He offers us true rest and peace in him if we put ourselves under his protection and care. I love the invitation he gives to us. For all those who are weary and burdened, he will give us rest. I know that those terms weary and burdened certainly apply to me and I imagine they apply to you. 
The pressures of our world bring us to the point of exhaustion. But Jesus offers us a place of rest, restoration and renewal. He offers us shalom, that sense of wholeness and complete well-being that we can find only in him. During this busy Christmas period, don't ignore your need to rest. It's not just a biological need. It is essential for our mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. God longs to give us rest if only we turn to him and accept it. How can we build in times of rest and restoration this month to ensure that we do not lose the real lose sight of the real importance of the Christmas period? What might it look like for you to take time and enjoy rest with the peace, the shalom of God?